recording that was playing, but it is the gifted Kem Kabonu that is singing live in the room. That's one of the gifts that God has given to him, and we must thank God for that. Your Excellency, we want to welcome you, Regional Chairman, National uh, General Secretary, First Vice Chairman of the party, we welcome you. We welcome you to this engagement with the clergy by His Excellency John Dramani Mahama as part of his Building Ghana Tour. And we'll go straight into the program. We're going to stick to time and, because our God is a God of time. And so we'll have the opening prayer by our host pastor, Reverend Emmanuel Kwesi Ofori, who is the resident pastor of Assemblies of God Community 4. Thank you. Good morning to us all. Please let's be up and standing and look to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Our gracious and everlasting Father, we thank you for this blessed morning. Thank you for the gift of life. Father, it has been your cause, it has been your blessings that we see ourselves among the living. We commit our meeting to you, your hands this morning. Steer the affairs, take control. We pray that our deliberations, our discussions will be fruitful, O oh God. Father, so pretend over our lives and breathe your spirit upon us, even as we will discuss common issues for the betterment of our nation, Ghana. Thank you for all gathered here this morning. And of this confidence that you who have started a good work in our lives, you will surely bring it to completion. And our joy may be full in you. We thank you. We bless you for this privilege. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you. Please may receive your seats. Thank you very much. The giftings of the Lord are many. Some are short, some are medium height, and some are tall. Uh, and, and that's on display here today. So, uh, resident pastor, I don't have your gifting. Um, at this juncture, on our program, we would acknowledge some dignitaries. Before we go to the high table, I'd love to acknowledge every man of God here. You are all God's servants and oracles. We, we thank you for making time to be with us. And, and as our spiritual fathers, we continue to count on you for our guidance. But I cannot continue without acknowledging members from GPCC. I see, I see our fathers from GPCC, the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council here. I see uh, Bishop Gordon Kise, who is, if I'm not mistaken, the vice chairman of the GPCC. Please let's put our hands together for him. And, 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 and just last night I watched a video of a man who speaks truth to authority without fear. He has the, 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 the spirit of Samuel speaking to, to prophets, uh, speaking as a prophet to kings, Bishop Samuel N. Mensa. Bishop S. N. Mensa. We have Bishop George Nikwe with us here as well. We have Bishop Bene J with us here as well. Apostle Afute Odai is also Odai Odai is also here with us. Bishop Richard Ahiagbede is also here with us. Reverend Samuel Boating is also with us here. We have Reverend Kujo Amuasari also in the house with us. Reverend Joseph Kojo Ahunya is also with us. And forgive me, because of time, I'm not mentioning your churches and denominations. Reverend Dr. Samuel Kofi is also here with us. Reverend Dr. Divine K. Adai is here with us. Pastor Kweku Ofori is here with us. Reverend Loviana Lamle Latte Aldersgate is here with us. We have the Venerable Frederick Lamy. Lamy with us here in the house. We also have Reverend Emmanuel A. Enum in the house here with us. And like I said, every other man of God and woman of God in the house, we acknowledge your presence and we thank you very much for, for being here with us. In today's meeting, we've got members of parliament on, in Greater Accra who are here accompanying His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. We've got our parliamentary candidates as well 
We've got regional and national executives in the house. We've got some people on the days, and um, I don't know if I should proceed or... We would, we would, I would acknowledge them from behind. Um, we have Nana Philip Acha, who is a paramount chief from the Asin, Asin Jwabing, a uh, traditional area in the central region. We also have a member of our elders in the region, former National Health Insurance CEO, Honorable Sylvester Mensa. And let me say he's a, a member of the board at Perez Chapel, uh, where I also fellowship. We have behind the, one of our mothers in the region. She used to be Deputy Chief of Staff under His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. Our mother, we all call her Auntie Valerie, Madam Valerie Sawyer. And her boss, while she was at the presidency, is our big brother, uh, we call him former, deputy, uh, former local government minister, former Greater Accra Regional Minister, Honorable Julius Deborah. He was in Greater Accra. Yes. Now, up, up front, we have the deputy chief whip of the minority caucus in parliament and MP for Ada, Honorable Comfort Doyo Gansa. We also have in our midst our second national, vi sorry, our vice chairman, is the vice national chairman, national vice chairman of the NDC, former regional minister of Greater Accra, former vice chancellor of the University of Professional Studies, UPSA, Professor Joshua Alabi. We, I think I skipped one, I have to go back. Uh, in protocol hierarchy. We have the father of the region, our regional chairman, former member of parliament for our Denton constituency, Honorable Emmanuel Ni Ashimo. And then we have a personal big brother of mine who, despite his age, people still refer to him when they call babies with sharp teeth. He's the current general secretary a walking encyclopedia when it comes to economics, agriculture, transport, you name it. The Honorable Fifi Fiavi Kwete. I, I believe after his time as General Secretary, he will finally answer the call of God upon his life to become a man of God, because he's a man of God as well. And we have your host MP, uh, the, 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 the hosts here, we... It's, it's a measure of two constituencies, I'll say, that are hosting you here. Well, in fact, three. We, we, we've got Tema East, Tema Central, and Tema West. We've got lawyer James Enu in, in here. He's our parliamentary candidate for Tema West. We've got Abby Bright, who is our parliamentary candidate for Tema Central. And then we've got the Honorable Isaac Ni Ashai Odamton who is a member of parliament and our parliamentary candidate for the Tema East constituency. It is my hope that you pray for them, that all three of them join me in parliament, in the ninth parliament. My attention has also been drawn to the fact that a very senior member of our party, who used to be mayor of Kumasi, the Honorable Kojo Bonsu is also in our midst. Honorable, we acknowledge you. We acknowledge you. Thank you. This shows you the unity of purpose that we have. I mean, and when you, I, I, can't, I can't teach pastors the Bible, but we see the power of unity in the story of the Tower of Babel. Even God was afraid. The only time God was afraid of man was when man was united. And he said, let us go into the midst and create confusion. But we have unity, and this unity is of God, and we believe it will take us right. At this juncture, I would w want to invite our regional chairman, the father of the region, Honorable Emmanuel Niashimo, to give us his welcome address. Good morning to you all. I was tempted to say our party's slogan, but um, when I look at the faces, I realize that this is a non-colorless uh, occasion. But anyway, I think 
if I'm, I'm, I'm really tempted to say it, I'll find one or two men of God responding to it. Because as a father of the region for my party, I have brothers and sisters among you. So I'll say it so that people behind me who we know that I, a pastor is even giving me a sign to go ahead. So I'll say, Ayazu, Ayazu, Ayazazuza. All the members of the clergy who responded, you get more blessings. <laughs> and those who didn't respond, we'll come back again. His <laughs> Excellency, the President, National Vice Chairperson, our General Secretary, members of Parliament and PCs, party faithfuls, and party executives, constituent executives men and women of the clergy are stand on the rest of the existing protocols. We are here this morning for the His Excellency not to come here for campaigning but he's paying a courtesy call on groups and important organizations within the region. Yesterday we had the privilege of meeting the house, the Great Accra House of Chiefs. Because they are the custodians of the land. And before you enter in somebody's compound, you need to do the needful. We found out needful that we also need to meet the clergy. He's not here to campaign, but we are here to listen. His Excellency is here to listen to you. His Excellency is here to listen to you. So, the Ghana you and I want, whilst we are preparing our manifesto, he can do more and also get more into what advice that you're going to give to us. Before I go ahead, I quote Proverb 11:14, where there is no guidance, the people fall, but in the guidance of the council, there is safety. We are here this morning to seek for your guidance. We are here this morning to seek for blessing. We are here this morning to seek for your prayers. Lastly, to also seek for your strategies. Because you are a congregation and your numbers keep on encouraging and enlargement. We can see some of the churches in the greater Accra region where they have the best strategies of even buying buses to convey their members in a flow before and after church. So we are also here to get the best strategy for our campaign. I will not speak much, but 2024 election will be a crucial election. As the tree says that Yeshua is you and Yeshua is that. So definitely we are not the wildness has time to be corrected. Each and every member sitting here as a clergy votes. Each and every member here is a potential politician. We have seen members of parliament who are as a member of clergy who are also part of the legislature. So we know that you vote. What we hear or what the good message we take from this gathering, we know that message will also be conveyed to your members of your churches. Lastly, in my conclusion, before His Excellency will come with the Ghana we want message and policies, I quote the same Bible, Luke 11:21, and I quote: "When a strong man armed keep his palace." His gods are in peace. As an NDC, we don't have gods. We have only one God. That is our creator up there. We can promise our God that we worship, the God that you and I worship that, we will keep him in peace. We will do everything as a political party to arm our house or our palace to make sure that we can assure you this time around, we will protect 
your vote and defend your vote and we know by the grace of the almighty god and your intervention he says let's see john damani mama will be sworn in as a president of the republic of ghana 2025 with his members of parliament i thank you and god bless us all and summary of what they said, everybody will be voting, non-political or political. My chancellor is around, so I need to impress him this morning always. Thank you very much. Thank you. And your, your chancellor is not just the national vice chairman. In fact, today he is the acting chairman of the NDC because our chairman is out of the jurisdiction. Let me also acknowledge Apostle Dr. Eric MFA Agbogadenu, who is in our presence, and once again our host pastor, Reverend Emmanuel Kwesi Ofori, who is the resident pastor for Assemblies of God Community 4. At this juncture, we're going to go straight into a short interactive section. Now, this session for want of time because we've got quite a number of programs today but we'll try and spend as much as possible with the men of God is to seek your counsel and your suggestions on what you think the next government of Ghana from 7th of January 2025 by God's grace under the leadership of His Excellency John Dramani Mahama and Professor Nanaje Nupokwajiman what should be their focus what are the issues that you think the clergy as the clergy, you want to see the government do. So this is not a Q&A session. It's not a questioning session. It is an open forum to get the mind of God. As David went to the prophet before going into battle, when, when he had gone to battle and come back, and his wife and family had been looted, he didn't just go out as a man of war. He came back to the prophets of God and asked them, Shall I pursue? Will I overtake? Will I recover? And got the mind of God. His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, before he goes out, wants to consult with the prophets of God and ask, Shall I pursue? Will I recover? And will I overtake? And as he's here today, he's not here alone. A good father leaves a legacy for his children and brings them up in the fear of God. And so, as he's coming to meet the clergy today, he's showing his own biological children the way of God. And so he's here today with his son, Sharaf Mahama and his daughter Farida Mahama. That is the sign of a good father who is teaching and bringing up his children in the fear and way of the Lord. And so at this juncture, I would open it up. We will take a batch of five or maybe a batch of three first suggestions and then maybe do a second batch of three as well. And so respectfully, men of God, if you have any suggestions or for us, please. We, we, we have one microphone. Yes. All right. So it will come to you. Thank you. My name is Reverend Father Francis Destiny Amenuvo. I'm in charge of the Divine Mercy Catholic Church in East Legon. Your Excellency. Thank you for this opportunity to share with you. I would have two points. My first is to commend Honorable Sam George for your loud voice about this bill LGBTQ+. Shall we please applaud him and all who have a voice for this? I would want to propose that our politicians will not cringe at the feet of western powers when they threaten us of not helping us with fiscal resources when we go back to the scriptures as honorable sam george has always told it, that it is an abomination to god if you read Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 14, it says that the princes, the priests, and the people piled up infidelity upon infidelity, and they were an abomination to God, and it caused their enemies to pillage them. So please 
look at that issue let's not look out for money let's look out for morals that is the first one the second it's about our educational system a lot of people will attest that our mission schools helped so many people in our generation I want to suggest that we look at our educational system very well it, our principles are being thrown to the dogs and we must reclaim the educational system so that our youth of today will be properly formed for the future so take a second look at our education system thank you very much thank you very much I, I see a number of hands in the room and we'll try to cover as many people as possible but we'll give honor to whom honor is due our fathers from the Pentecostal Council are here the GPCC are here so I would want to do this first round with them and then we will come back into the room and we'll try to keep it very short straight to the point two minutes maximum so I think I'll start with uh, Bishop Gordon Kisei thank you very much in the first place I want to give thanks to God for His Excellency for this opportunity to meet with the clergy I do appreciate that His Excellency has been in this uh, chair before so he knows what Ghana we have or Ghana we want is may I also announce to the press that we are speaking without colors because we want to speak as fathers with our heart unless the Lord builds the house they labor in vain that build it and so my first point is that uh, His Excellency will seek wisdom from God because without wisdom the, the, the challenges of our nation is so complex but when you are behind you think it's so simple it's like watching a football match you find out that anybody, that anybody at all can score but we need wisdom to take our nation to where the nation must be many people behind the scene before they become uh, people voted into that noble office say good things about our nation but when they get into that house i use that house in quotes then somehow their mind changes and things that they can never do they begin to do we want to pray that his excellency when he gets there he will seek the wisdom of god and the wisdom of god will help him to succeed my second point it's about our youth our youth our youth will need to have hope we need to have a social architecture that will tell the youth of Ghana that if I finish school there's something for me to do so it's not just handing over money or handing over houses or handing over parcels there must be a social architecture that, by the time you come out of school there is a structure there is a plan there's a program and uh, when you go through that program you may not come out all of a sudden but you come out very successful our youth need hope so I want to suggest that anything we can do to give the youth hope will be done the last and the, not the least is that as clergy we are behind the scenes and we want to stand with whoever gets into that office and because his excellency is here we want to stand and say that our prayers will continue to be with you god bless you thank you very much bishop bishop s n mentor all right thank you very much and uh, thank you very much your excellency for the opportunity to share some few thoughts with you um I was born five months after independence and um, when Krumah was overthrown I was about nine years but during that period I have seen the glory of uh, Nkrumah's Ghana and compared to the Ghana we have today I would say literally the glory is lost and what can we do if we will want to improve that glory I think uh, one, one of the con um, suggestions would be the possibility may be to suspend the celebrations of our independence for the next four years for the next incoming government and use the resources to improve our state of our hospitals and over the 5,000 schools we have under trees if we can put that resources together each year we can improve the 5,000 schools under trees and also for our pregnant mothers who are born who bring forth children on the floor in the, the, the dilapidated hospitals this investment of money can be used because um, 
it's not worth the celebration when we know we have issues that we need to deal with. Um, number two, there has been always a clarion call, the need for a national vision. And I'm aware we've shared some few thoughts, but it is important if everybody would be brought on board so that it wouldn't be either an NPP vision or an NDC vision, but a vision that would be bought by all. And then finally, Parliament can legislate a law that will make it binding for any incoming government to plug into any of the vision. By doing so, we can be moving our country forward for the next 30, 40 years. Also, the third thing is about the infiltration of our political parties and politics into our security forces. We have a number of our security forces in our congregations, and they can all tell us that politics have really damaged them and destroyed them. If we can remove politics from our security forces so that they can be loyal to the state and the institutions, that will possibly help us. And the, the next thing I would like to share, there is a need for um, looking at our current situation to improve what I would call citizenship and uh, patriotism, is there the possibility for Parliament today, we congratulate Parliament for now reciting our national pledge. But perhaps, can we move it to the next level where this reciting of our national pledge will be done in all schools every moment, at our tertiary institutions, at our workplaces. When they start work, they will recite the national pledge. In the churches, they will recite the national pledge on Sundays. If we do that for the next 10 years, believe you me, we will produce the new Ghanaian because it will imbibe in them the spirit of patriotism and nation building. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bishop Samuel and Mensa. Uh, Bishop N George Nikwe. Um, here, here, here. Yes. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, His Excellency uh, for organizing uh, this conference. It is very, very important that. Uh, the politicians always engage the clergy. Uh, what is on my heart is the peace that we have. How do we maintain the peace that we have? We have elections approaching and elections normally call for uh, fighting. Uh, what are the plans we have towards peace and so as we gather here uh, this morning and uh, as we all look forward to the elections uh, we pray and we as clergy always are praying for the peace of the nation we haven't seen any fighting in our country uh, we haven't seen so many of those uh, atrocities uh, from neighboring countries inside etc uh, we need peace and so please let us all work towards the peace of our nation no one no party should stand up and say and say to the youth let's fight whatever it is let us put our heads together and solve whatever problems that may arise and problems may arise we are not looking forward to a divided country we are looking forward to a united country where we can be prosperous and so my prayer and my desire uh, is that we have a peaceful country a country that we can go about doing our work we can go about doing our politics we can go about worshiping god we can do things together and you can walk at any time and you are free and so this is uh, the main uh, uh, point that i want to bring let's fight for p the peace of our nation thank you very much thank you very much bishop ben aj bishop ben aj yes thank you for this opportunity I would simply say that as our brother, I, I, I call him our brother because of the Christian connection, as he comes up 
to the seat, to that house. If people he puts around him, because he has the power to to employ and must also have the power to fire in case people he puts around himself to help him govern well don't do according to his expectations which will take him far and leave a, a, a good legacy here he should just be bold enough to fire them and so he can always have the right for people around him to do the good job he has come there to do Thank you very much, Bishop Bene J. Um, I have Apostle Afote Odai. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, thank you once again for coming to my church last month to bless us. We are very grateful. I have um, my Honorable, thank you very much also. I'm a missionary pastor. I travel almost every month and I see human beings drinking water with animals I see schools under trees Your Excellency in your governance we want you to have a very strong policy plan and strategy to make sure our mothers and our fathers and our sisters and our daughters in the villages don't drink that contaminated water again. Number two, when we were young we can go to fishing at Peshi Lagoon. Today Peshi Lagoon is killed and dead. We, I want to suggest that in your next governance, please have a, a plan and a strategy to revive our water bodies and also able to have a clean sea within our coast. The next one is Dr. Mensah have said some already, but I want to add a little. If we can suspend our uh, independence, that is only filled with dancing, jumping, clapping, and singing, and money wasting. If we can have it suspended, and rather launch operation backyard garden and tree planting for every constituency, I believe that will be able to generate something more than just people marching on the sun. And maybe the fourth year is celebrated. The last is to have that independent night as a, a presidential dinner night for the 275 constituencies that can be hosted by companies that will be able to have Thanksgiving and have fundraising to target projects in constituencies like the clinic in Crow constituency. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Apostle Odai. O Odai, thank you very much for your suggestions. B Bishop Richard Ahiagbede. Bishop Richard Ahiagbede. Thank you, Your Excellency, for the opportunity to meet as the clergy and to dialogue with us. Um, I would want to humbly suggest that um, Ghana as a nation would be looked at holistically so that more emphasis would be on infrastructure, education, health, agriculture and industry. If these five areas are really giving the needed support and recognition so that at the end of the day if two or three of these areas are well promoted and enhanced so that everyone in this nation would benefit from these areas I'm sure to go a long way to help us because the issue of our education system is becoming something and then also I humbly want to ask that import duty import duty would be looked at carefully because of the way import duty seems to be escalating the importers are having a great deal of struggle and at the end of the day it is we the consumers that suffer all the issues that come along with duty payment 
And so I would want to humbly ask His Excellency to look at that when God gives you the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, Reverend Samuel Boating. Reverend Samuel Boating. Thank you for giving me the opportunity, His Excellency. I would like to reiterate the, one of the previous, previous speakers' concern. That is about peace before, during, and after the elections. The only legacy we have as Ghanaians is peace. And we need to protect it with all that we have. And so I will advocate that His Excellency you will do everything to maintain the peace that we have. And I believe strongly that peace is tied to justice. And so there should be a strategic plan for the nation to ensure peace during and after the election. A higher percentage of our population also we can identify as the youth. And uh, there should be a concerted effort to help the youth because there is a high unemployment in the system and so it is making their lives very uncomfortable that is why they are prone to all kinds of uh, uh, gimmicks anybody comes with anything and they just get hooked to it so I would like our former president who is coming again to take a critical look at the youth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Our fathers have spoken and we, we will need to hear from His Excellency. I see a lot of hands. It will be impossible to take the, all the hands, but we'll take about three more from the, from the crowd. And I beg you, with the greatest of respect, if someone has said something you intend to say, there is no need for us to repeat that point. And I'm going to be very strict on time. Two minutes. Two minutes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you for the opportunity. I, my name is Reverend Dr. Alfred Kwekwa Kumbi. And uh, what is really a burden to me um, is the way our school children behave um, in our schools. Um, in fact, I happen to be an S SMC chairman, and I see what is happening in our schools. I mean, the primary, the GHS, and it's so pathetic. I mean, the respect is no more there for the teachers. And sometimes some of the children will be just misbehaved, trying to provoke the teachers, knowing that it is said that no more can. But um, by God's grace, some of us, we've seen it. Growing up, our, the teachers, they ensure that they discipline us, tell us the right thing to, and if we misbehave, you will be killed. The Bible is so plain. Spare the rod. But, Thank I mean, you. we hear you people coming, I mean, government upon government come and say that, oh, I mean, don't kill the child. I, I want to find out. No or questions, maybe, please. Okay, a okay, let me know. So you made me. a okay, suggestion so on, please, on discipline. I want you to, please, if God you. helps you and you come to power, I will want to plead with you people that you look at it. And Thank so you, that Thank there will you be very discipline. much. Thank you very much, man of God. Thank you very much. I, I have not heard a woman speak. I see a lady at the back there. And so. Thank you. Kindly introduce yourself, your name, your church, and two minutes, please. Please, my name is Apostle Dr. Juliet Richardson. My church is Royal Miracle International Church. I want to say something about women and children. Women suffer a lot when it comes to giving birth. And when we go to the hospitals to give birth, sometimes they don't have money. And they have, they have to buy a drug. They will watch them die because it's pay before delivery. 
and women are suffering a lot. There's no bed for a woman to deliver on. Our hospitals are choked. We need more hospitals. And for our children, we are not able to afford the big, big school fees. And they say it's free education, but we don't see anything free. The children go to school, and you have to buy a lot of things by the time they leave. A poor woman is spending like 3000 We want Mr. President. I call you Mr. President because God says you are the next president. In my vision, I saw the flag of Ghana with the name John. Since he has promised that a John is taking over again, you are a destiny child. Leaders are born and not made. And God is going to help you get there. But please, see about women and their children. There are lots of single parents. If you can do something about it. Mr. President, I went to the north. I'm an evangelist. I travel a lot. There's no road to Tumu. Because the road is very bad. And there are lots of bagless on the way. A lot of armed robbers killing women. Who are going to do market. And you know all the struggles we have in Ghana. Women are the most people that go through that pain. Thank you, very Thank you much. Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So what, what I'm doing is I'm just taking one from each of the rows. So I'll take one from here. Yes, the gentleman there. Yes. The man of God over there. Yes. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Richard Wilson from Multitude Evangelistic Ministry, Afienia. I would like to suggest that looking at the work uh, our president did before, and it's coming again. Uh, I would like to suggest that the time, the years they are spending on the seat is too short. And therefore, I would like to appeal to His Excellency that when he comes back, they should change the constitution. Because if they change the constitution, he will be able to work well and then we get the better Ghana we are talking about. Please, I would like to appeal that the next coming president should stay for seven years. All right. We, 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 hear, we hear your recommendation. His Excellency will deal with it. I'm going to that end, and we will, take, we will take another woman. I see another woman there on the second row. And, and I, I think that that's going to be my last one. The, the woman on that row. I, I, I plead with you, men of God. I know if, if we do this for another three hours, we would not even take everybody. What I will plead with you is whatever suggestions you have, you can just pen them down. I'll stay behind. The rest of the MPs are here. Your MPs are there. Just let's get them. We'll feed them all to President Mahama because I, I'm, I'm speaking in the prophetic. President Mahama, and then, and then we would, he will get to work on it. So, yes, Mama. Please identify yourself and the church, please. Thank you. I'm Reverend Evelyn Amihie from Mount Horeb Victorious Church International, Committee 10. Uh, Mr. Incoming President, His Excellency, I want to thank you and compliment you that after a long wait, you finally came up with the name of a woman as your vice president. I do hope you really went into consultation not only with men but with God as well. So I want to commend you. On that note, I just want to say please don't make her a decorative piece. Let her be part of you. See her as a woman that, you know, God has given to you. Do consultation. Think together. Move together. Think together. And give her opportunities. Thank you. Secondly, I am a product of a mission school, Holy Child Secondary School in Cape Coast. And I want you... Mr. President, incoming, 
to seriously do a big consultation with stakeholders and see if the churches can be given another chance. And then last, His Excellency, I think Ghana belongs to all of us. And whatever any party is doing, no matter what, we sitting back see it as developing Ghana. So why do politicians come in and abandon projects? Well-meaning projects that were begun by their predecessors. It, you see it hanging all over the places. Both top parties are guilty. And for once, His Excellency in coming, I wish to appeal to you that as you go around listening to us, you also have an open eye. Look out for uncompleted structures that are meaningful to the communities and do something about them. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I had said we were ending it, but you see, a man whose heart has stayed on God wants to hear the voice of God. So His Excellency says, I should take another two more. There's a gentleman right behind the woman whose hand has been up. Let's take that. And then, wow, man of God. My name is Reverend Chris. My name is Reverend Christopher Do Tokonu, Glorious Liberty Artery Church, Anya Accra. My issue is related to transport, the future of transport. And I want His Excellency, the incoming president, to look again as a policy measure about the fragmentation of transport. The ministry has so many transport ministries which is a waste of resources. We have Ministry of Aviation, Ministry of Roads and Transport, Ministry of Rails and Highways, and a whole lot. Unfortunately, there is a portfolio of evidence that they are, they are even not coordinating among themselves. So eventually, decision making has become an issue. I would kindly entreat you, His Excellency, that if we can have only one ministry, the Ministry of Transport, and then all the other modes of transportation will fall under that ministry. I think it will be a step in the right direction for thank all of us. Th thank you very much. Thank you very much. So that we move to the next. Sir, you, your hand has been up for a very long time. It's the dispensation of grace that got you in. Let me, let me extend that grace to other people. There's a gentleman with a clerical on this row. So I'll just do the one, one, one again as I'm going. Yes. God bless our homeland, Ghana. And make our name God bless Mr. Strong. President, our Father, Jacob Puenshaw. Now, may the Lord bless us all. I have one thing to ask. My name is Reverend Dr. Prince Brown. I want to stand for the youth in Ghana and also the youth that are coming as a man of God. Out of 16 regions we have in Ghana, there are five, statistically speaking, that are endowed. Very endowed with mineral resources. God is so wise and so so loving. And every nation he has endowed them with mineral resources. These five out, out of the 16 regions that God has endowed with mineral resources. Asante region is one. Western region is one. Northern region. Eastern region. These five can develop the whole Africa. A lot. Varieties of mineral resources. Lithium. Name them lithium bauxite these five can develop the whole africa and our youth are struggling for job and mr president uh, i believe and i hope uh, god's will will come to pass mr president is embarking on 24 hours economy and it's very good and if is is mounted on employment i know all the policies and all the manifestos will mount or uh, up with the uh, job creation all the manifestos are mounted up with job creation. And five out of these 16 regions are endowed with varieties of minerals, gold. Uh, Ochiman has a lot of gold underground. One 
can develop Ghana and develop other African countries. Let the thank, nation, thank, thank you President, much. open your thank eyes you. Thank you. and go around and fish out the mineral resources and use them appropriately thank, to thank develop you, our God. nation. God, God, God bless you, you sir. Did not mention your name. And My name is church. Reverend Dr. Prince Brown. Shama Reverend Doctor Prince Brown. Prince Brown. Shama for your miracle ministries. Thank you very much. Um, I, I've seen the. Oh wow. The, 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 the gentleman with the microphone is moving under the option of the spirit and choosing himself. I think I'm favored. Please, God bless you. Bless you. Your name, your church, two minutes, please. I'm Prophet Nana Ajumai Ousu with Possibility Worship Center. 2020, I was the one that led the executive to swear at the party headquarters by the grace of God. Um, my question goes to our incoming presidents by Sorry, the grace of no, God. no questions i was clear from the beginning by Only the grace of suggestions. god suggestions no questions if you have a question please let us have them this is an interactive session i have realized that over the years we we've borrowed and borrowed and borrowed and borrowed from the foreign countries and and at the end of the day it's not helping us and they are determining the outcome of our life and therefore the Bible says something in proverb that the learner or the slave or see proverb 27 verse 7 there is rules over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender until when are we going to develop our own and when are we going to appreciate our resources and use them to develop because i think that all the resources that we have in ghana here god put them here for our development god put them here for thank us you. to thank you maximize thank it you. and use it thank you. for our growth and for the future betterment of ghana thank you man god of bless god. You. thank you man of god on this row i have seen an elderly woman at the back and her hand has been up and i think that uh, yes I, in the spirit i think i should let her speak the lady at the back yes i'm being led by the spirit so mommy please your name and your church two minutes please <laughs> But your mama ain't no bang one, no. Said Galam say, and Tokuru na well to two am na am na am na am na nwe jawo na Emma and Tom Tom keka yeng wo kukumi yeng ya Emma to Tom wo wu mesra ben isoba President coming John Mahama aba omo one suit am na ni na na one treat am na no na one friend we a coffee. It's a coffee, an essential commodity all over the world. As we move past in cocoa, and see a bigger sense of cano. Now, mum, we have met prisoners all over Ghana. We are the same human. Now, we be chia on cow. A kachiano, we be chia moe bien. We are the first time we are pushing. Mama, ye da si, ye da si. Thank you, Mama Yedasi. You, you see what I said that she's not a man of God or a woman of God, but the spirit led me to her. She's brought some very important points. Yeah. I will take one last one from here. Um, well, he stood up. So that's the very last one. And then, H.E., we come to you, sir. Thank you. I'm Reverend Edmond Soa Boy from the Women's Wing Department of... Uh, Sorry, we didn't get your name properly. Please, can the room be quiet? Men Reverend Thank Edmond you. Soa Boy. Echo. Reverend yeah. Echo. Edmond. Edmond Soa Boy. Yes, my contribution is this. Several presidents or governments have rolled on. Still, we are having problem challenges in Ghana. And here we are having this forum with uh, pastors, leaders of the nation, 
I do believe that once the president coming is having in mind 24 hour economy, I suggest that we also have 24 hour chain prayer for the nation so that what we have found difficult in doing, God will help us show us mercy and move ahead because our children and us are suffering. Thank you. Thank you very much, Reverend Edmond. And we will, bring, we will bring to an end the interactive session. All I will just say even before His Excellency comes on is the chain prayer is needed even for the victory of President Mahama. So please start the 24-hour the chain prayer, prayer chain for the victory of John Mahama and the NDC and deliverance. Please give us a minute interlude, and after that, you will hear His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. You would realize your suggestions are great. Everybody realize without God, there is no progress reigning in shaming the world. Move my hands on hands upon, in every way you can. Committee chairman, all of you must be standing. Stand or committee chairman, do a dance. Will you say a prayer? Pray anytime for your life, in every way you can. Yanko for your Indio. Mumayasum no, Yanko for without God, there are no possibilities. Interaction with men and women of God. You deserve an applause for yourselves, enjoy your day. Your Excellency, you deserve an applause. Oh, we celebrate whilst we roll. Your sensibility, your abilities, your generosity. Ladies and gentlemen, suggestions will be taken in consideration in every aspect of life. This would be the end of the song. I will end this interactive song. Thank you very much. And with the greatest of respect, can we have a standing ovation as we welcome His Excellency, the incoming President of Ghana, John Dramani Mahama. Thank you, thank you. Kindly be seated. Uh, thank you very much. Um, indeed, I feel very elated by the excitement and interest that this interactive session has uh, engendered uh, this morning. Um, I want to thank all of you, um, our men and women of God, for taking time off to come and join us in this uh, program. Um, as I started to do in 2020, we decided that we're no longer going to seclude ourselves with a few experts and write a manifesto for our party. Instead, we're going to do a tour and listen to all stakeholders in this country, everybody from every walk of life, uh, traders, seamstresses, hairdressers, masons, carpenters, doctors, nurses, teachers, men of God, traditional leaders, everybody. And um, we'll get nuggets of wisdom from them so that we can uh, uh, present them in our manifesto and use them as policy for when we come into office. And so this is the 14th region I am visiting. After this I have two more and uh, I want to say this is one of the most exciting uh, sessions that I have seen. Uh, even with time running past, the number of hands are still seen up. I guess if we wanted everybody to ask a question, we would stay here for another couple of uh, hours. But let me thank you very much, everybody who got the opportunity to uh, speak. And as Sam George said, um, anybody who has any suggestion that you think was F-shaking and that there will be an F-quake if you didn't make the suggestion, kindly write it on a piece of paper and uh, hand it over to our member of parliament or to uh, uh, Shai Odamte or to any of them <coughs> before we leave. Um, the church has an interest in what goes on in the country. Even though your principal role is to see to our spiritual well-being, 
the physical affects the church the material affects the church because the church does not hang in the air the church is on ground and is on earth and so whatever happens to your congregation affects you the leader of the church and as Proverbs uh, 29 2 says when the righteous are in authority the people rejoice but when the wicked rule the people mourn and so we have an interest in who uh, is in authority in our country because as we have learned recently if we make a wrong, wrong choice it affects us as we are all going through currently and so the church must take an interest in what, who is in authority um, we have spoken a lot about the various things we'll do but I want to appreciate the suggestions you made and some of them are similar to what your colleagues have said in other places that we've been to and I have made some pronouncements on those ones and so I'm not going to comment on everything that was said but I'll pick a few of them and I will just make a few comments in order that we wrap up the, the session. I want to thank Reverend Amenuvo for his, um, his uh, commendation to Sam George and his uh, fellow uh, parliamentarians in respect of the bill on uh, good family values. Um, it is now an issue of legislative and legal issues. Parliament has done its work according to the majority leader the bill has not landed on the president's table but indications we are getting is that he says he won't sign it because somebody has filed a suit with the supreme court so it's become entangled with some legalese uh, reverend s n mens had talked about it uh, a few days ago and uh, what he said has gone viral but we'll just continue to watch and see what happens but this is what uh, the reason for being self-reliant is if you are not self-reliant that's when people can dictate to you if we were self-reliant nobody would come and ask us to do this or to do that and so one of the key economic policies we must pursue is one of self-reliance and it's been done in this country before for those of us who are old enough we remember general ikea champions time operation feed yourself operation feed your industries self-reliance was the aim that this government was uh, that government was pursuing so that we could be proud dignified people because we're able to feed ourselves and so that will be part of the key policy that we pursue so that tomorrow somebody won't come and tell us to do this or that because if you do that I will do this and so that's um, uh, something that we should look at with regards to the mission schools I mentioned it already that the time has come for us to bring the church and government together to man the schools and so we are proposing that for the mission schools we will make sure that the chair of the board of the school is from the church and then they will also have a hand the mission schools will play a bigger role in the selection of who becomes the headmaster so that the mission can have some control these schools were transferred to government because government had more resources to expand uh, in terms of infrastructure and so most of the schools came into government even for new community schools that are being set up anywhere I go people are saying adopt our secondary school because they know once you adopt it government would invest in it and expand the school but if it belongs to a mission like Amadia to Methodist to Assemblies of God we must make sure that that faith-based organization has a greater role in terms of um, uh, running the school um, with regards to um, Bishop Kise, Bishop you know advocated that um, I seek wisdom from God uh, I'm not waiting to get into office to do that I already seek the face of God in everything that I do and uh, I pray before I make most decisions I have had this in prayer for quite a while and my decision to offer myself to my party was guided by that uh, godly wisdom and so you can be sure that I will not uh, forsake it uh, Bishop Kisei also talked about the future of our youth our youth are beginning to lose hope in the future because they don't see any prospects for them 
recently the statistics that have come from the Ghana Statistical Services say that unemployment has risen to 14.7%. In 2016 it was 8.5%. It's gone up to 14.7%. But the more unfortunate thing and what we should be watching is that the Statistical Services say that the unemployment rate amongst the higher educated from tertiary is higher than uh, those uh, secondary and below. So the higher you rise, the less likely you are to get a job. And that is a very dangerous uh, development. Before, the higher you went, the more likely you were to get employed. Unfortunately, it has reversed now. And so of that 14.7% unemployment rate, tertiary uh, trained graduates are a bigger chunk than those uh, below secondary and uh, basic education. And so it's something that we need to look at. And so the next government's you know, major focus must be uh, putting in policies that will create jobs, jobs, and jobs. And these should not be artificial jobs like we normally do. You do NAPCO and you know that you have no sustainable uh, place to put them after the three years when they graduate from NAPCO. And yet, it is just done to win political points. Oh, we've given 100,000 young people jobs. And now even they finish the NAPCO, you owe them nine months allowance arrears, and government is refusing to pay it. And so we must aim more at sustainable jobs. And we can get those sustainable jobs in many places, including the agricultural value chain, agribusiness, in the mineral sector. God has blessed us with many minerals. Every day, new mines are being discovered. And if we're able to uh, change the mining laws in order that we indigenize some of this mining activity, it will create more jobs for our people instead of all the expatriates who come in, come and mine, take the profits away. If we make more profit from our mineral activities, we can invest it in industry so that we create more factories to produce uh, items for ourselves and also create jobs for our people. And so, um, Bishop Mensah, um, talked about Nkrumah, who was our first president. Uh, he's one of our most respected presidents, not only domestically but internationally. He's been one of the greatest presidents. And his aim was to make Ghana an industrial powerhouse and make it self sufficient. And so he set up Gayhawk Brick and Tile, uh, Asebo Lime Factory, Ashanti Shoe Factory, uh, uh, Kumasi Shoe Factory. I mean, just name it Gayhawk Distilleries. I mean, so many factories and infrastructure. Akosombo Dam. Till date, Akosombo Dam produces 30% of Ghana's electricity consumption, something that he opened as far back as 1960. And so, what we need is visionary leadership that will put in the things that will transform our our country. And uh, Bishop talked about suspending Independence Day. Um, I don't know how much it costs, but I think what you want to address is that we must cut waste because there's a lot of waste in the system. If we cut down waste, we would have more money to invest in other productive sectors of the economy. And so I would say that we should look at where we can cut waste so that we can put it in our schools, in our hospitals, and, and other places. One of the things that Professor Mills's government and mine were uh, good at doing was removing schools under trees. And all we did was, every year we budgeted for taking out a certain number of schools under trees. But at the same time, we transferred 7.5% of total government revenue to the district assemblies. And so we told every district assembly, Every year, we want you to take out two schools and the trees and to build four chips compounds. The rest of the money, you can do whatever you want with it. And so adding what we were building from the budget, including what the district assemblies were building, by the time we left office, we had uh, 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 built more than 1,800 uh, uh, new schools uh, where formerly schools were under trees and we had built more than 4,600 chips compounds across the country because we have 260 districts and so imagine each one is building two schools per year 
for four years that's eight schools and if you multiply eight by 260 you can imagine the number of schools and then you multiply four chips compounds by 206 um, four every year so that's 16 16 chips compounds by uh, 260 you can imagine the number of chips compounds we'll be able to build we'll realign this kind of budgeting and expenditure so that we can take out more of the schools and the trees and then also build more chips compounds the chips compounds have become very important because it takes health to the doorsteps of the people you can't build a hospital in every village but i can have a small chips compound with a health worker there the health worker is able to treat small sicknesses like typhoid malaria and those kinds of things, sicknesses but for where, where things, uh, the sickness is more complicated there should be a referral hospital not too far away where they can refer the patients and that's why we're building the district hospitals and chips compounds within the catchment area of the district hospitals this government started the agenda 111 they call it but they started with 80 hospitals I don't know what survey was done before the hospitals are being put in but most of them are at a certain stage of completion one would have thought that they will start with what they can uh, uh, do and finish and so if you can do 40 hospitals finish and open them then you start another but you spread to 80 hospitals by the time they leave office I don't think many of them would have been completed and then it means that the next government must find money to continue and complete all these hospitals but I've made a pledge that we're not going to abandon any projects indeed I said that we're not going to be in a hurry I said that we're not going to be in a hurry to start new projects the little resources we have will use to complete ongoing and abandoned projects uh, several of the e-block schools I started have been abandoned and so we would look to continue them they are building these new hospitals we'll look for the resources to complete them and uh, put equipment there so that they can be of benefit to the people the taxpayers money is used to build these things so when you build it and a new government comes and they leave it another government comes and they leave it it is a waste of the taxpayers money and so better to complete them and put them to good use there are many of these projects in the secondary schools uh, dining halls dormitory blocks administration blocks and other things lecture rooms that were started uh, in other governments have all been abandoned and so we're not waiting till we come into government we've commissioned an inventory taking in every district to give us an inventory of what all the abandoned projects are what is their stage of completion so that as soon as we come into office we know exactly what budget we are putting every year to continue those projects until we finish them um, Reverend Mensah also talked about the national vision and that's been one of the problems we have um, Rawlings had vision 2020 and uh, when uh, President Kofo came 2020 was thrown out of the window and they brought the poverty reduction strategy uh, growth and poverty reduction strategy GPRS or something like that and then when he left agenda for transformation came and then when I came I brought the 40-year development plan and when uh, President Akufuado came he threw the 40-year development he took part of it and created his Ghana Beyond Aid and so we don't have a specific plan that we all are working to and so I'm suggesting that we have the 40-year development plan we can compress it into a 20-year plan with four-year segments and so it's 20 years we expect to be here in 20 years but every four years this is where we must reach every four years this is where we must reach and all of us must sign on to the plan so that we implement it together whether it's Mahama in power or somebody else comes into power they will continue their four-year leg of it so that it becomes like a relay race and then um, politics in the security services uh, you're right um, recruitment has been partisan but what I've even heard recently is the sale of positions uh, public appointments 
and so if you're a teacher you have to go and pay uh, before you are taking if you want to enter the armed forces or the police uh, they are charging children as much as 30,000 cities before they give them uh, uh, employment I think we must put a firm foot down and stop this anybody who is caught doing it must be dealt with so drastically that other people will think twice before they attempt to do that uh, citizenship and patriotism, moral education. When we were young, we used to learn religious and moral education in school. It was a subject that we studied. There was a master for RME, and we used to learn it. Now RME is lost in the curriculum. You can't find where it is. When you ask, they say, oh, it's part of social studies. You know, you have to go and search in social studies to look for where some small chapters of RME have been uh, put in. I think we must expand the study of RME because some of those religious principles we studied in school are still what is guiding us in terms of our conduct and our behavior. <laughs> when we were young too, we had um, uh, patriotism and uh, civic education in school. We were taught um, how to be a responsible citizen of your country. You know, we were taught the national pledge. We were taught uh, how to stand at attention with your chest out when the national anthem is being played. We even had a book they call Courtesy for Boys and Girls. We were taught how to sit and have table manners, how to be, you know, uh, polite to elders in a bus. If an elderly person comes in, you, the young person, must get up and give up your seat. All these things we were taught, and we've grown up with them. They say that teach the young the way they should go, and when they grow, they will not depart from it. And so we must catch them young by including all this in the curriculum so that our children will grow up knowing what the values of our morality are and what the, the value of good citizenship is. Uh, Bishop Nikwe called for peace in elections. I can assure you we are a very peaceful party and um, we do not advocate violence. And so we will do our best to make sure that uh, elections are peaceful. But while we look at peace, we must also look at justice. I mean, nobody will sit down to see somebody cheating in the elections and say, because I want peace, I won't do anything. And so while we... Um, how do the Ashanti say, the, the, the tree speaking people say, they say, Wutu Okrafo, Noatu Momonen Sofo. Uh -huh. So <laughs> we, should, we should also, those who are the ones who provoke the violence should also be talked to. If the Electoral Commission is neutral, the security services are neutral, and they owe allegiance only to the state and they do the right thing, I'm sure we would have peaceful elections. And we must also look at the role of the Peace Council. The Peace Council was created for situations like this. And so if you, the religious leaders and the traditional leaders, can have a session with the Peace Council and also do some advocacy that they rise up to their room uh, properly, I think that we should be fine. Uh, Bishop Ajay, uh, admonish that if you have appointees and they are not doing well, fire them. You have the power to appoint and to disappoint. And so the advice is well taken. I have done several reshuffles when I was president, moved people to other places, and then uh, got some people out. Normally, by the middle of the term, you should be able to tell if people have fitted in and they are moving according to your pace. If they are not, they probably would be better in some other place. And so it's something that governments normally uh, do. Um, Bishop Odai is an evangelist. I went to his church and I saw a video of the work that he's been doing all across the, world, uh, the country, providing water to different communities. And I encourage you to continue. We, we prioritize water as one of the sectors that we had to work in. And so from Professor Mills' time until my time, we built the most uh, 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 small town water systems in this country than any government in, in history. We moved water coverage in terms of access to clean drinking water from 56% to 72% in the eight years that we were in office. For Accra alone, 
we added 40 million gallons of water. And for those of you who live in Adenta, you remember that it is in the, at that time that Adenta and East Legon started getting water for the first time in many years. I used to live in East Legon. I moved out because my tap didn't flow for two years and I had had enough. So I moved to Jowlu. So when I came, I said, no, no, I have to do something for those I left behind. And so we put in... <laughs> We put in additional 40 million gallons and what we did was we laid a new pipeline to bring the water through the northern part of the city. So the water came through uh, 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 Santon and all other places, came to Adenta and then uh, to East Legon, University of Ghana, all of them started to get water. In the last eight years, this government has not added one drop to water supply in Accra. And recently I saw Ghana Water Company say Accra is growing too fast and so they don't have enough water to supply everybody. And I said, you must plan ahead. Accra will continue to grow fast. But every government must put in additional uh, uh, volumes so that we're able to keep up with the growth. So if in eight years you haven't put in a single gallon of water, why don't you think that the uh, demand would have stripped supply? Nowadays our taps flow once a week twice a week you know before they used to flow more regularly but um, we shall correct that when we come we would add additional water to across water supply so that everybody can get water uh, Bishop Obodai talked about uh, water pollution um, there's a lot of water pollution due to Galamse and other incorrect practices like he said um, the Odor drain and uh, Kole, you know, used to have fish in them. And when we were small, people you, we used to see people, you know, fishing in those um, rivers. Unfortunately, they have been polluted. And that is because we don't have a system that collects all the wastewater for treatment before discharge. I, working with uh, Zoom Lion, put the uh, liquid waste treatment plant that is near Lavender Hill and I was the one who opened that plant to stop the pouring of feces directly into the sea and so now all the trucks go to the liquid uh, waste plant the waste is treated and the poisonous things are taken out and the uh, clean water is discharged into the sea we can do the same for the drains that come into the colony uh, by stopping first the factories. The factories should put many treatment plants on their site and treat their wastewater before they discharge it into the drain. We must also look at how we can uh, redirect the wastewater from domestic uh, places to some treatment sites before we put the water into the drain. If we do that, you'll be shocked. The kole will come back to life immediately. Um, Bishop Ahiagbede had the longest list, infrastructure, health, education, agric, industry, and uh, import duty. Um, the import duty is not much the problem. The import duty is normally 10%, uh, except for luxury goods. Luxury goods is about 20 something percent. The problem is the additional levies. There are so many levies. Yesterday, um, my regional chairman was showing me a list of a container that somebody had cleared. And you just had import duty, uh, value added tax, get from NHIL. But after that, the total list was about 19. COVID levy, special import levy, what and what levy. And the unfortunate thing is, this is these are the people who told us we're going from taxation to production, from taxation to production. But in the history of this country, they've levied more taxes than any other government in history. And uh, it leads to credibility problems, not only for them, but also for us. Because I go to many places and people say, ah, but you politicians, before you get power, you tell us this, then when you come, you do something different. And so, I don't know, the driver and his driver's mates, if they are listening, <laughs> if you are listening, <laughs> Don't wait till you come to office. They say when they come, they'll take E-Levy, Emissions Levy, Betting Levy. They'll take them all. Why wait till you come? You can do it now. Because the people are complaining that the taxes are too many. A businessman came to me 
and said, look, their, their, their businesses are struggling because of the taxes. And Ghana Revenue Authority is on their necks every minute with audits. And so I assured him that when we come, we'll rationalize the taxes. They have signed an agreement with the IMF. And so you might not be able to come and dismantle those taxes immediately. But we will rationalize them. We will make sure that we get revenue from other places. And one of you talked about the minerals and mining industry. We should be getting more from what God gave us, our minerals. And so we can renegotiate the Minerals and Mining Act so that Ghana gets a bigger share and we can use that share to ease some of the burden of our, on our businesses because now the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement has been signed. We have the Equiwas Trade Liberalization uh, uh, um, Scheme but yet our factories are not able to produce more to export because the burden of tax on them is too much. Ghana has become a high cost point for doing business and so some businesses have even relocated to Cote d'Ivoire and other places and so we must claim back Ghana as an important destination for, um, uh, for business. Uh, Bishop Watting um, said we must have a plan for peace and we must do something about youth employment. Uh, that has been taken. Um, Reverend Doctor said uh, we should reintroduce caning <laughs> in the schools. <laughs> when we were young they caned us. Uh -huh, but um, the world keeps changing. Uh, we live in a different environment. Sometimes when you cane a child the parent goes and fights with the teacher and so on and so forth. But I do think that if we improve morali moral education, it's the breakdown of moral education that is creating all these vices. If we improve moral education, we teach discipline in schools, there are other means of disciplining the child uh, uh, rather than just caning them. And so we'll explore all that. We're going to have a big stakeholder meeting on education. I announced it, I said within the first hundred days we're going to call all the stakeholders, parents and everybody and we're going to talk about our education system because we're falling behind in terms of the quality of our education. Um, it's going to not only concentrate on free SHS. When I say stakeholder uh, uh, forum on education, people think it's just about the problems of free SHS. But also the basic. The basic is suffering. Government is putting all the resources in the secondary level and starving the basic level of resources. And so the quality at the basic level is going down. The children have no textbooks. A new curriculum was issued five years ago and five years till now the children have no textbooks based on the new curriculum. And so we must hold um, a, a stakeholder conference and discuss all aspects of our education and come together with a consensus and a plan which all of us must buy into and implement so that in a few years we'll see that the quality of our education has um, improved. Uh, Apostle Richardson um, talked about how women suffer with the health system and um, I think that the basic problem is that the NHIS has almost collapsed. Uh, this government is not paying money into the scheme and once the scheme doesn't get money they also cannot pay the facilities for the claims that they make and so they are forced to charge the patients when the patients come or else all they'll do is give you a folder you go and see the doctor that's the only service you get everything else you have to go outside and pay with cash to to get and so it looks like we're coming back to the cash and carry days and so what we'll do is we'll strengthen the NHIS again so that it can give the services that it was designed uh, to, to give. The government has put something they call the capping and realignment law and the capping and realignment law says that in any statutory fund if the money exceeds a certain percentage of the budget the extra money goes into the consolidated fund for the finance minister to reallocate and so NHIS is suffering that enough money is not going to the fund and so for most of the places they are not able to give the service that they uh, have to give because NHIA is not reimbursing them. Indeed I've got reports where when patients go and the doctor comes they ask uh, who are paying with cash then they take the people who are paying with cash and seat them separately 
and then they go in and see the doctor first before uh, the backyard people, NHIS people, they start calling them one, one by one. You know, I mean, we live in this country. Our country says there should be no discrimination. But because of the problems with the NHIS, a lot of uh, health facilities are discriminating against NHIS card holders. So we'll strengthen the NHIS and uh, strengthen the maternal aspect of it so that women are able to deliver safely and not lose their lives. Um, Apostle Richard didn't talk about education. A recent report came out by Edwatch, and for those of you who have read it, it says that despite the free SHS, government is bearing only 23% of the cost of educating our children, and the parents are bearing 77% of the cost. And so it means that extra cost that the uh, parents are bearing is more than what government is paying. And so we need to look at that and see how to balance uh, that out. We're going to put in more community day schools so that children are able to stay at home and go to schools. So in Accra, big cities like Accra, the regional capitals, we already have secondary schools that have extra land. And so what we'll do is we'll put an e-block on that land and create a separate secondary school for the children. So that uh, schools will be able to absorb more children so that then we reduce how many children are posted from Accra to Boko Secondary School or Navrongo Secondary School or somewhere. Within their community, they will have a first class secondary school that they can attend. And for the beginning, those schools will be allowed to recruit from area. Uh, they won't be put on the CSSP, the computer placement. If you are a, a parent living in a certain community, school is completed, you go and apply for your child, and your child is enrolled in school so that he stays at home and goes to school every day. Um, the Tumu Road, we awarded it on and um, it was discontinued. The government has the contractor to stop. They were going to investigate it. And uh, they did for four years. They were investigating. And then they asked the contractor to continue. But he's not being paid, so um, he's unable to uh, complete it. I was in Tumu two days ago. And so I passed on that road. So Richardson passed on. And I'm, I know it's in a very bad state. And so we don't know. We know the economy is in crisis. But I have told people that I will take over and find that the situation is worse than we are even being told. So when I go, teachers say we want increased salary. This one says, do this for me. This one says, you have to do this. I say, you wait. When we come, we'll open the books. We'll all see what is there. Something that we can share, we'll share. If there's nothing, then we have to create it before we can share. So we'll not make promises, but within the resources of those very terrible roads, we need to uh, do something about them. Um, Reverend Richard Wilson, he says four years is too short. Yes. <laughs> Reverend Duncan, it's, it's not within my <laughs> It's the constitution. I remember President Kufo suggested that the term be increased to five years. Uh -huh. But when the Constitution Review Committee went round, Ghanaians were up there be four years. Because uh, the argument is that if you make it five years and you have a bad government, so five years is too long to suffer. <laughs> and so the Constitutional Review he maintained the term at five years, uh, at four years. Uh -huh. But even then, if you want to change that. It is an entrenched clause in the Constitution. And entrenched clauses in the Constitution must go for a referendum. And in the referendum, not less than 40% of the electorate must turn up to vote. And out of those who vote, not less than 75% must say yes. And so no one party can change the term of office. Unless there's a consensus of all the parties, MPP, NDC, everybody says yes, let's extend the tenure. There's no one party that can, can do that. And for now, the Constitution Review recommended four years, that we leave it at four years, and the White Paper endorsed it. And so, um, even though uh, you, you wish that it be extended, uh, it's going to be something very difficult to do. But I believe that 
if we run the relay race properly, even if it's four years, we'll be making progress. If every government comes and does its bit, moves it to the next level, another one comes, moves it to the next level, it won't matter that it's four years. You know, we'll make progress. Um, Reverend Christian, we have announced this already. We're going to merge the transport ministry. Uh, yeah, we're going to bring aviation railways and all of them back into transport. When we're in government, we are just one transport ministry. It is this government that came and disaggregated it. When we were in office, we had one information min communications ministry. That was information and communications. And so we're going to merge them again. We had local government that included sanitation. And so we'll send sanitation back. We want to reduce the number of ministries. And some of the unnecessary ministries, we'll just take them. Business development, what and what and what. We'll just cut them out so that we can bring the ministries down so that we can reduce the number of ministers like I've said 60 so that we cut down the expenditure on, on government and then we can invest that money in other places for instance I said if we cut down the expenditure of the office of government machinery we can dedicate some of that money to give assembly members a small allowance to be able, also able to do their work so that we don't introduce a new budget for them we can reduce the office of president budget and be able to free up 100 million cities a year to pay assembly members allowances um, Reverend Prince Brown, uh, Mineral Resources, uh, we're going to, we will review the agreements that we currently have, like I said, so that Ghana can get a bigger share. But we're not just going to take that money and consume it. We're going to put it in an investment fund. And that investment fund will be used for our roads, our railways, and the things that will transform this economy. And so if we increase the royalties or we take a bigger share in every mining uh, venture, that money will go to the Minerals Investment Fund and that money would be used for infrastructure development in the whole country. Resources are found in more than five regions. You actually even said five regions. There are more. Today there's a new mine coming up in Upper East, you know, uh, called Cardinal Mine. And it's going to be one of the... Uh, biggest uh, uh, gold uh, finds in recent years. It will add almost 500 uh, million ounces of gold to our production. So it is um, everywhere. God has blessed us and so we need to uh, keep an eye on that. We also work on the agric value chain. One of the things that is missing in agric is that we always give support to farmers to produce more. But when they produce more, that's all. We just abandon them to their fate. And so the middlemen come and buy the food cheap. The same food the farmer sells at a certain price, you come to the market and find it at three times, four times, five times the price. And that is because we've not developed the agribusiness and marketing chain. And so one of the new crop of young business people we're going to create are what I call agripreneurs, agribusiness people. We'll give them small machines so that they can process tomatoes, soya bean, they can mill rice and package it for the market, they can produce fruit juices for our, our shops so that we can produce more of the things we consume and cut down on the things that we import. And so the Ministry of Agriculture is going to be called the Ministry of Food and Agribusiness because we want agribusiness to come out as a new area that we're going to invest in so that they can take the crops, off take the crop from the farmers and be able to produce it into something else. I'm a farmer so I have a personal stake in this. I have a farm in my mother's uh, village. Last year I produced a uh, thousand bags of soya bean and uh, I sold it and I put some money in my pocket. <laughs> I, have, I have 17 workers I pay on the farm every month. And so I have an interest in this. If there's an agribusiness man who comes and puts a factory to buy my soya and produce soya oil and animal feed, I'll be happy. And so we'll assist them to do that so that we, the farmers, can also begin to smile. Uh, I'm getting to the end of it. Um, I didn't get a name, but the old lady divinely inspired by God who came and spoke, you know, touched on a very important thing. And I think I've announced it before. When they finish the illegal small scale mining, they just leave the pits and the water. There are several stories where people are falling into the pits and died. And so we're going to recruit 
the, and employ the young people in the community and we're going to pay them and we're going to bring the equipment we will level the ground, we'll clean the water and then we will employ those boys to replant trees and other uh, uh, valuable crops on the land <laughs> Madam is talking of coffee, coffee is a cash crop and today there's a huge demand for coffee, our cocoa industry is going down and so we need to look at other value crops that we can engage our people in in order that it brings them you know uh, m money to be able to look after themselves and so we're going to reclaim the degraded lands there's we'll find money from our own resources but apart from that there are a lot of green funds that lend money for things like this land reclamation tree growing and all that we're going to tap into all those so that we can employ our own children to close the pits and then regrow something valuable on it and then i have also talked about it i said we're going to encourage all the schools to set up school farms when we were kids our school had a farm and we used to grow our own maize we used to grow you know uh, uh, various crops uh, yams we used to grow yams for our kitchen and apart from that we also used to grow cotton and there was Ghana Cotton Company in Tamale so we the children would go and pick the cotton and then they take it to Ghana Cotton Company they weigh it and they pay the school and the school gets money to do some things for us and so we would encourage the schools to go into farming because the children are there and we have agri classes you need them to do practicals in agri too and so while they are learning the subject they are also going to the farm and learning the practical agriculture we are going to have farmer service centers and so the schools don't need to have their own uh, uh, tractors when they are ready they have the land we will let the farmer service center send the tractor to plow for them harrow for them plant for them and then they will be in charge of the weeding and all that but I also mentioned it at the Amadia function that our churches should also consider agriculture you've done education you've done health look at agriculture and agribusiness too and so the churches can have farms you understand and we the church members we can dedicate some days to come and offer you know uh, labor on the farm and that will all help to supplement the income that our churches make I said it because Amadia have a, they bought the Pomazzi poultry farm it was built by Nkrumah and it was put on divestiture they bought it and so I was asking Mulvi Bin Sali I said ah so what has happened to the poultry farm he says oh, we are still running it but we don't have the resources to run it on the scale that it was when Nkrumah was there so I said when we come apply I will give you a loan to scale up the poultry farm so that the church can produce chicken for the country and it's not only them other churches can do the same thing can do poultry you can have tree crops mangoes you know and get a small fruit processing plant to produce fresh juice for the market so there are many things that uh, we can do together and uh, finally Reverend Sowa Boy advocated for 24 hour chain prayer that one I leave it to the men and women of God uh, to see how that can be organized but I know you intercede on behalf of our country already and the uh, Bible enjoins you to intercede on behalf of um, leaders so that they are able to gain divine wisdom to be able to lead the country in a way that makes the people enjoy their dignity and prosperity and so I thank you very much these have all been very useful nuggets of ideas that you have given us the lady here Beatrice is our recorder and uh, everything you said she was capturing on the little laptop that she holds so I can assure you that from here we normally send it electronically to our manifesto drafting committee and then they look through and they pick up the nuggets of wisdom in it I thank you very much may God bless us all Congratulations, we will pick up the nuggets and make sure it works out well, that's fine.